Star Ocean. Starting from the abandoned mining space station. Chapter 31. Chen Ming looked at the calculated results and felt a little hesitant. This coordinate is not too far from where I am now, and it won't take long for the spacecraft to arrive. But the group of people who stayed here before probably went there, and their identities should be investigators or researchers. Since the psychic pulse is still continuing, that means they most likely died there. Although it is also possible that they successfully found the psychic pulse generator and took it away or destroyed it, a new one appeared again later. But no matter what, this coordinate point and its vicinity are quite dangerous. Chen Ming did not want to get in contact with the mechanical race that could slow down the expansion of the human empire. Even though there may only be a few scattered machines on the planet, Chen Ming also has no military spacecraft or weapons specifically for combat. It is not certain who has the higher actual combat effectiveness. So Chen Ming thought about it for a long time. Still decided to go and have a look. Even though he knew the danger and the difficulty of handling the psychic pulse transmitter, he still wanted to touch this bad luck. Because Chen Ming didn't know when the spiritual pulse would fall on him. Although the group of people who had lived here for three months seemed not to be affected by the psychic pulse, Chen Ming was not sure whether they would have special protective equipment. In addition, I am only a few inches away from leaving this planet. If something goes wrong at this last moment, the consequences will be unimaginable. But Chen Ming was also a little worried if the target of the spiritual pulse could be chosen. So if I just go through like this, will the psychic pulse device just turn the gun and give me a hard blow? Chen Ming was not sure, but even if it was what he guessed, Chen Ming would rather take the initiative in his own hands than pray that he would not suffer. But Chen Ming actually thought of another method. Just leave here and hunt farther away from the psychic pulse generator. Previously, Chen Ming thought that the source of animal madness was viruses, so he preconceived the idea that animals anywhere could be infected by viruses. But now, it's been determined that the source of the animal's madness is the psychic pulse generator. That means that as long as you are far enough away from the generator, even if it is not guaranteed to be 100%, there is a high possibility that you will not encounter the psychic pulse again. But once other places are also affected by psychic pulses, or even more seriously, then Chen Ming may waste more time here by doing this. Just when Chen Ming was struggling, squeak, Xiao Shi suddenly screamed, just as his mind pulse swept through nearby animals before. But this time, Chen Ming didn't need Xiao Shi to remind him. Because at this moment, Chen Ming's mind was occupied by a sudden feeling of restlessness. The psychic pulse has indeed affected Chen Ming. But the effect of this influence seems, a bit awkward. Chen Ming reached out to touch his head, but he only touched his helmet. Except for the sudden uncomfortable feeling of being stuffed with a lot of messy things in my mind at first, I quickly adapted to this feeling within a few seconds. This sudden anxiety was not even as good as the sudden feeling of exhaustion he had experienced when he was undergoing large-scale modifications and repairs to the spacecraft. Chen Ming recalled with some confusion the panel of the protective suit he saw last time. Although the panel shows that the protective suit has undergone several modifications, no matter how you look at it, it seems that the protective suit has not been modified in terms of psychic pulse protection. Moreover, Chen Ming turned to look at Xiao Shi who was trembling on his shoulder, acting exactly the same as last time. This time's psychic pulse seems to be no different from the last time. Although he was affected by the psychic pulse, there was good news for Chen Ming, that is, he no longer had to consider whether the psychic pulse would affect him. In this way, Chen Ming no longer has to worry about whether he should leave this area or not. In short, he should go to the coordinates to take a look first. Chen Ming made up his mind and quickly took Xiao Shi back to the spacecraft. Although the impact on him was not obvious, Xiao Shi's performance still made Chen Ming worried about its condition. After all, compared to the location over the camp, the distance between here and the psychic pulse transmitter is obviously closer. Another point is that since Xiao Shi and himself have been affected, will a few of the surrounding animals also be affected? Chen Ming moved very quickly and the spacecraft took off again in less than half a minute. But it was just like the worst-case scenario imagined by Chen Ming. Chen Ming soon discovered a group of crazy animals gathering in the direction of the spacecraft. And these animals were the empty jellyfish that Chen Ming encountered on the first day he landed on Rui Jupiter. 
Say Sao Sao. Sao Sao is here. So you usually can't see a few, but now you can gather such a big bunch. How did you do it? Chen Ming unconsciously started talking too much. Although the empty jellyfish in front of him may not be the same batch he encountered originally, although he can directly lift off vertically and get rid of them. But Chen Ming doesn't want to do that now. Not to mention that I had made a series of modifications to the machine guns just to deal with them. That is to say, even if the machine gun has not been modified, the unknown fire in Chen Ming's heart makes him not want to let go of these empty jellyfish. Moreover, Chen Ming can also take this opportunity to test whether his modified machine gun can cause enough damage to these astonishing numbers of empty jellyfish. It's a little difficult to control his emotions, but at least Chen Ming's brain is not broken yet. Weapons experiments are quite suitable to be carried out now. It would be best if it succeeded, which means that Chen Ming's transformation was correct. If it fails, Chen Ming can still analyze the problem of modifying his weapon based on today's situation. Then Chen Ming's next modification of the weapon can correct these problems. Moreover, Chen Ming was facing an empty jellyfish, which meant that no matter what, Chen Ming had an escape route that he could use at any time. Just fly straight into the sky. With so many reasons placed in front of Chen Ming for Chen Ming to attack this group of empty jellyfish, Chen Ming would naturally not let go of this opportunity. The spacecraft quickly drew several arcs in the air, gradually guiding the crazy empty jellyfish into a big ball just like before. Chen Ming pulled the trigger with a sense of venting his anxious emotions. The ultra-high rate of fire brought by the two double-barreled autocannons and the extremely fast ammunition supply provided by the chain feed. In an instant, a large area of empty jellyfish was cleared in the shooting trajectory of the spacecraft. This scene made the corners of Chen Ming's mouth slightly raise unconsciously. Continue to spray bullets at other empty jellyfish. As the speed of clearing empty jellyfish increases, the possibility of empty jellyfish besieging Chen Ming's spaceship again will be reduced to zero. Chen Ming didn't even need to turn on the overload power grid to overload the engine to avoid it. Relying only on two modified machine cannons, in just 10 minutes, they cleared away almost more empty jellyfish groups than last time. As the anxiety in Chen Ming's head dissipated, the figures of the empty jellyfish that came out of nowhere gradually disappeared. The psychic pulse passed just like that. Chen Ming ignored the blue gel-like objects that almost covered the ground below the spacecraft, including several stone buildings. He didn't want to be bombed again. Just let the spacecraft turn around and leave west. Before going to the location of the psychic pulse generator, Chen Ming planned to go back to the temporary camp. I was in such a hurry when I came out in the morning that I forgot that today happened to be the day when the first batch of orange fruits planted outside the spaceship was harvested. Go back and collect the land first. Food and a stable food source are what you need most now. Everything else can be done later. The spaceship flew back to the sky above the temporary camp. As soon as the spaceship approached the camp, Chen Ming saw the bull beast that was tied up by chains but still struggling. In fact, after learning the truth about the animal's madness and experiencing it personally, this bull beast whose brain was damaged by the mental pulse was useless to Chen Ming. However, Chen Ming was not in a hurry to kill it, and planned to see what its final outcome would be. But when Chen Ming saw it, a question suddenly popped up in his mind. How did these crazy animals find him accurately? Before, the bull beast found him hiding in the bushes on the other side of the river without any signs, and the purple-tailed deer that suddenly appeared next to the camp earlier. Chen Ming didn't say anything about the empty jellyfish. After all, the spaceship was so noisy, but the bull beast and the purple-tailed deer gave Chen Ming the feeling that they only had eyes for him. Is there something special about him as a human being? Chen Ming didn't know how to explain this situation. But Chen Ming thought about it, since the mechanical race had an inexplicable hatred for humans. Then it seems reasonable that animals that have become crazy due to the influence of the mechanical race's mental pulse can directly find the existence of humans. Chen Ming didn't think much about it. After the spaceship stopped, he took the planting tools. He still had things to do next. Time passed quickly. The night of the 15th day since Chen Ming came to this planet came. Chen Ming spent part of his daytime to investigate the three buildings. The rest of the time was basically spent on farming. 
The first batch of orange fruits he planted had been harvested, and the second batch of orange fruits, although Chen Ming felt that the probability of staying on the planet until the next harvest was not high. But since there were extra seeds, Chen Ming still planted them as usual. He repaired his weapons during the day and was affected by the mental pulse, so his mental state was not very good. So even if he wanted to go to the location where the suspected mental pulse device was located, he had to wait until Chen Ming recovered tomorrow. The night was getting darker. Chen Ming lay on the bed in the living cabin, and it was a bit difficult to fall asleep like yesterday. Because there might be a battle where he was going tomorrow. It was not a battle on a completely different level, where the spacecraft relied on the advantages of technology and the times to fight animals, but a battle in which the difference in strength between the two sides could not be confirmed in the true sense. Chen Ming was not optimistic about the firepower of the spacecraft, but the limitation of the materials in the spacecraft's storage cabin made it impossible for Chen Ming to make some last-minute preparations. Looking at the modification options on the machine gun panel that appeared in front of him, which were completely insufficient in materials. Chen Ming could only sigh and force himself to sleep. Mechanical tribe. The next day, Chen Ming woke up early again. This time, Chen Ming did not complete his daily work, but started the spacecraft as soon as he was completely awake. Flying towards the direction of the coordinates determined yesterday. Xiaoxi seemed to have noticed that Chen Ming's state was different from usual today, and he took the initiative to climb onto Chen Ming's shoulder and rub Chen Ming's face. However, Chen Ming did not have extra time to play with Xiaoxi today, so he could only touch its head to stop it from running around. Chen Ming wanted to use all his energy on what might happen later. As the spacecraft gradually approached the target location, Chen Ming took the initiative to close the porthole protection layer that the spacecraft would only close when entering the atmosphere, and only relied on the camera outside the spacecraft to observe the situation outside. Not long after, the image of the target location appeared in front of Chen Ming. It was not a mechanical building filled with various advanced equipment as Chen Ming had expected. There was only an open space here, and a square mechanical device about two meters high was placed on the open space, which looked very, simple. Next to the device, there were a total of three mechanical bodies with obvious differences in appearance. That was the mechanical family. The mechanical body closest to the device was about one and a half meters high, with four mechanical arms, each with different professional equipment. It looked like a mechanical family dedicated to maintaining equipment. The appearance of the other two mechanical bodies was completely different from this logistics mechanical family. It was two meters high, and the overall appearance was somewhat similar to a mantis, with a slender body, and the whole was covered with gray-green external armor with various traces of weathering. Their left arms are mechanical arms that imitate the structure of human arms, while their right arms are replaced by a special large weapon. The appearance of this weapon is similar to that of a gun. From a distance, you can see a large number of coils exposed, which seems to be some kind of electromagnetic weapon. Although this electromagnetic weapon is almost half the length of the mechanical body itself, Chen Ming did not feel any sense of disharmony when he looked at it. Instead, the two mechanical bodies looked more threatening. At the same time that Chen Ming saw the mechanical family through the camera. The mechanical family also saw Chen Ming's spaceship. The two combat mechanical bodies similar to the mantis shape raised the large electromagnetic weapons on their right arms at the same time and aimed at the spaceship in the air. Chen Ming immediately let the two machine guns shoot in the direction of the mechanical family, and at the same time he was controlling the spaceship to fly quickly. But as Chen Ming's ears rang, two dull hammering sounds that were almost connected rang. Chen Ming suddenly discovered that the durability of the bottom armor on the spacecraft's panel had dropped from 100% to 99%. If it were just like this, it wouldn't be a big deal, but then, a few words were displayed behind the armor's durability value. The armor has been penetrated. In an instant, cold sweat broke out on Chen Ming's head, and he immediately gave up his plan to fight back. While the two mechanical bodies below were still preparing for the second shot, they immediately activated the overload power grid. The engine overclocked, and the sudden burst of speed caused the spacecraft to immediately rise and disappear outside the range of the mechanical body. Chen Ming looked at the picture captured by the camera below the spacecraft with some shock, and at the same time opened the three-dimensional imaging of the entire spacecraft. 
The footage on the camera showed that there were two more holes in the armor on the bottom of the spacecraft. From the three-dimensional imaging, it can be clearly seen that the bullets from the two machines had penetrated the armor and got stuck between the armor and the structure of the spacecraft. Only a few bullets can penetrate the hull structure and cause damage to the function of the spacecraft's components. The armor of civilian spacecraft is really too weak. Fortunately, I didn't let the spacecraft face down just now. Otherwise, if these two shots directly hit the porthole, the heat insulating armor outside the porthole would be penetrated instantly, and the porthole would end in the same way. Even Chen Ming himself might explain it here. Fortunately, Chen Ming didn't let this happen. And Chen Ming is now clear about it. If you want to have some thoughts about the mechanical race and the psychic pulse generator under their protection. So the current iron ore number alone is not enough. However, the temptation just now is not without good news for Chen Ming. First of all, Chen Ming can confirm that the psychic pulse produced by the psychic pulse generator is not directional, otherwise he should have felt the influence of the psychic pulse just now. Secondly, it can be seen through the video recording of the spacecraft camera. When he discovered that the machine race was hostile, he immediately chose to fire back, and nearly half of the machine gun bullets fired hit the target. Although almost all the bullets that hit the two combat machines were deflected by the seemingly worn-out armor, they had no effect. But the bullet that hit the psychic pulse device in the back did damage part of its casing. Even that little damage looks like it will be repaired immediately by the four-handed repair machine clan. But as long as it can cause damage, it means that Chen Ming does not have to kill the mechanical race before he can dispose of the psychic pulse device. And Chen Ming's purpose was not to kill the mechanical tribe from the beginning, but to destroy the psychic pulse equipment so that his hunting could continue. But even if Chen Ming's target is not the mechanical race, the difficulty has been reduced. Chen Ming had to at least thicken the armor of the spacecraft to the point where the large electromagnetic weapon could not be penetrated by a single shot, so that the spacecraft could hold out in the hands of the two mechanical clans until the moment the equipment was destroyed. Chen Ming opened the spacecraft armor panel. The transformation interface is opened. There are four modification options shown above. Heavy armor, explosive reactive armor, multiple buffer armor, and armor material replacement. If you want to deal with the mechanical weapons with exaggerated penetration capabilities, heavy armor or armor material replacement are obviously very suitable. However, Chen Ming can't find a material stronger than aluminum steel composite material. So among these two options, he could only choose heavy armor. This is the simplest and crudest method of thickening and weighting the spacecraft armor. At the cost of losing a certain degree of maneuverability of the spacecraft, more powerful defensive performance is achieved. But after selecting the options for transformation, another problem appeared in front of Chen Ming. The amount of materials required to modify the spaceship armor is very large, which is not at the same level as the materials required to modify the pistol before. But half a month has passed since Chen Ming landed on the planet from space. Most of the metal resources collected at the beginning have been consumed in transformation and repair. There is not enough material in the storage cabin, and it will take some time even if it takes off again to collect from the asteroid belt. But Chen Ming immediately thought of a compromise. Just take advantage of the spaceship you have on hand. Chen Ming had clearly seen the three machines before. They had no components such as wings or jetpacks, which meant that they were restricted to the ground. The spaceship can fly as long as the attitude of the spacecraft is adjusted so that only the bottom of the spacecraft is facing the mechanical tribe. Then Chen Ming only needs to strengthen one side of the bottom armor. It can save a lot of time in obtaining materials for transformation. In this way, the time cost spent on mining is acceptable to Chen Ming. But then there is another question before Chen Ming. I went to space to obtain enough materials for transformation at once and then landed. Or should I choose to take time off from work, such as at night, to go up to the asteroid ring to collect minerals? Chen Ming is thinking, what you have to do must be to achieve your goals as the first priority. And my highest priority goal has always been to obtain enough food. Going to space to collect ore at once is really fast for solving the two problems of modifying the spacecraft armor and destroying the psychic pulse equipment. But this also means that Chen Ming will be completely unable to hunt in the past few days, and the second batch of crops he just planted will also be wasted due to lack of care. 
I can't even eat the guaranteed food. So after thinking carefully, Chen Ming still felt that it was best to continue hunting during the day. Even though the existence of psychic pulse makes hunting very difficult, the difficulty does not mean that it is completely impossible to do it. To be honest, as long as the next hunt can be successful once or twice, Chen Ming can completely run away regardless of the farmland, the camp, the mechanical tribe and their psychic pulse equipment. Therefore, continuing to hunt during the day, waiting until night to go to space, and relying on the automatic mining function of the spacecraft itself to collect minerals is the most suitable mining method for Chen Ming. Moreover, the spacecraft previously stayed on the ground at night mainly to rely on the spacecraft's camera to protect farmland at night. Now half a month has passed, and Chen Ming Zhao has completely reinforced the fence and laid out a large number of traps outside the fence. Basically, it is unlikely that farmland will be damaged by animals in the middle of the night. Therefore, taking off the spacecraft at night is also an option for the spacecraft to fully exert its full effect. The only disadvantage of this approach is that the spacecraft repeatedly enters and exits the atmosphere, causing a significant increase in fuel demand. Chen Ming didn't want to worry about fuel at this time. Anyway, if he ran out, he would go to the space station to get it. The space station had plenty of it. Having almost considered the issues that should be considered, Chen Ming turned his attention from thinking about the issues back to the present. In fact, my first trial just now should be considered a success. He knew about the situation of the machine tribe and their equipment, and also knew that the armor of the spaceship could not withstand a shot from the machine tribe's large electromagnetic weapon. If I finish modifying the spacecraft, I will still be in the same mess the next time I come here. Then Chen Ming will decisively give up the current idea of causing trouble with the mechanical tribe. Choose safer but slower ways to get food and plan later. The spacecraft returned to the temporary camp shortly after. After repairing the damage to the spacecraft, Chen Ming continued his daily work, farming and hunting. Anyway, Chen Ming has experienced psychic pulse personally and knows very well that the impact of psychic pulse on people is not too exaggerated. The psychic pulse generator that cannot be processed for the time being should not have any fatal impact on him at least in a short period of time. After Xiaoxi experienced a psychic pulse, he seemed to recover from anxiety much faster. As long as I can get through the last few days, I won't have to suffer from the psychic pulse in the future. The daylight hours passed quickly. Before night came, Chen Ming controlled the spacecraft and returned to space again. Near the still dilapidated abandoned mining space station, the highest mining priority was set for the most common iron ore. Then Chen Ming started the automatic collection function of the spacecraft. One night passed, and the smelting furnace in the spacecraft's working cabin was filled as before. After counting the harvest through the panel, Chen Ming found that today's harvest this night probably met one-fifth of the materials needed to transform the armor. If he could achieve such efficiency every day, Chen Ming would even want to change his plan. Go directly to high-density areas and spend a day collecting. But Chen Ming thought about it carefully and gave up. The main material required for transformation is steel, and iron ore, which is the most abundant and common in asteroids, needs to be collected. Even if you go to a high-density area, the amount obtained each time you collect it will not increase, and may even decrease due to the presence of other minerals. At most, it would save some time in moving the spaceship, but this time difference is not worth the time Chen Ming spends on tending the fields and hunting. Just continue to follow the original plan. When the sky was just getting light over the temporary camp, the spacecraft landed in the camp again. Chen Ming noticed immediately after the spacecraft landed that the cow beast he had tied up outside the camp seemed to have died last night. Only one body, which was completely decomposed, remained there. The cause of death did not seem to be death from starvation or excessive injuries, but rather a sudden death caused by high-intensity activity of consciousness and body for several days in a row. This is what happens to most animals that fall into madness. The corpse of the cow beast was of little value to Chen Ming when it was so rotten. So before starting work, Chen Ming deliberately cleaned up the plants around the cow and burned the body with a fire. Continue to start the repetitive and boring work every day. The four days of accumulating materials for armor modification are neither long nor short. It passed in the blink of an eye. In the past few days, Chen Ming could clearly notice many changes around the temporary camp. 
It seemed that his last behavior had stimulated the mechanical race. Although the psychic pulse was not directed at him, it appeared more and more frequently. As a result, the number of animals around is decreasing rapidly, and hunting has become almost impossible. Even if Chen Ming was lucky enough to encounter an animal that had not been affected by the psychic pulse. The next moment, the mechanical clan's spiritual pulse may affect them, making Chen Ming's long search and several hours of waiting efforts all in vain. Although he was protected by the spaceship, Chen Ming was basically not in any danger when encountering crazy animals. But high-frequency psychic pulses are actually dangerous in themselves. In recent days, Chen Ming was feeling a little uncomfortable due to the frequent psychic pulses. Not to mention Xiaoxi. If Chen Ming hadn't driven the spaceship into space every night, Xiaoxi and himself could rest peacefully at night. Chen Ming even thought that Xiaoxi might have gone crazy a long time ago. Fortunately, last night, the spacecraft had collected enough materials around the space station. After eagerly completing the modification of the spacecraft armor, Chen Ming couldn't wait any longer. He immediately controlled the spacecraft and flew in the direction of the mechanical race's spiritual pulse device. The fatigue caused by the large-scale modification of the spacecraft armor was quickly suppressed by Chen Ming's recuperation in the past few days. Moreover, Chen Ming's heartbeat was gradually accelerating as the distance between the spacecraft and Ruimu shortened. Just like when I first came here, I was filled with fear and excitement about the unknown. It was against the Ruimu planet before, but this time, it was against the machine tribe. It will take some time for the spacecraft to reach the target location. When Chen Ming couldn't suppress his emotions, he suddenly remembered that today seemed to be the day when the third batch of orange fruits was harvested. In order to ease his emotions, Chen Ming got up and went to the planting cabin. The agricultural machinery components have harvested all the fruits, all the excess vines have been stuffed into the nutrient solution extractor for recycling, and new seeds have been planted. Just like the previous two batches of crops, it is enough for Chen Ming to take the fruits to the cold room. Chen Ming picked up several baskets of orange fruits and prepared to leave. But his steps suddenly stopped when he stepped out of the door of the planting cabin. Because at this moment, Chen Ming realized something. Because I was worried that there might be a food crisis on the road, I planned to prepare excess food before setting off. But there is actually no need to prepare food on Ramu. He could stay in orbit around the star and grow orange fruits with extremely high growth efficiency in the hydroponic warehouse. If there is a problem with the cultivation of orange fruits, such as the degradation of the variety, Chen Ming can land on Ramu immediately to find the next batch of replacement crops. The efficiency is a little lower, but the safety factor is definitely the highest. In other words, in fact, on the first day when Chen Ming landed, after he found the seeds of the orange fruit. If Chen Ming did not pursue efficiency at all, then waiting for crops to grow safely in space would actually be the most stable approach. Chen Ming turned his head and glanced at the hydroponic warehouse. When he looked away, Chen Ming's eyes were suddenly attracted by the porthole facing the captain's cabin at the other end of the corridor. The abandoned mining space station floats outside. So it seems that this cannot be said. Even if the space station is occupied by bugs, the lack of attention for the past 30 years definitely shows that there are big problems behind the space station and even the entire galaxy. The longer he stays near the space station in Ramu, the greater the possibility of an accident after Chen Ming. So it is still beneficial to collect the food you need early and leave early. Furthermore, Chen Ming did not only get food on the planet. Xiaoxi, the hamster, was Chen Ming's biggest gain on the planet besides food. Moreover, if Chen Ming can kill those mechanical tribes in the future, the mechanical tribes themselves can also become part of Chen Ming's harvest. The right arms of the two mechanical bodies were equipped with large electromagnetic weapons that could penetrate the armor of Chen Ming's spacecraft with one shot. It can definitely be loaded onto the load-bearing point of the spacecraft after simple modifications. This is much more powerful than the civilian 22mm caliber machine gun. You must know that Chen Ming encountered countless dangers in the space station and Ruimu, two places that can be said to be completely invisible on the scale of the universe. Chen Ming couldn't even imagine how many troubles he would encounter during the next half-light year journey. Therefore, for Chen Ming, powerful weapons are the best way to deal with danger. Therefore, 
he would rather take certain risks to find a way to obtain the weapons of the two combat machines. Facing known dangers now in exchange for the means to deal with unknown dangers in the future. Chen Ming was happy to do this kind of exchange. The heat insulating armor outside the porthole window of the captain's cabin gradually opened while Chen Ming was thinking, but was immediately closed by Chen Ming on his own initiative. Because Chen Ming's target location has already appeared in his field of vision. As the height of the spacecraft gradually decreased to a position where the mechanical family could be seen clearly. Chen Ming's heartbeat gradually stabilized. He took a deep breath and focused all his attention on what he was about to do. Destroy the psychic pulse generator. Chen Ming quickly adjusted the attitude of the spacecraft so that the bottom armor of the heavy-duty spacecraft that he had modified was facing downwards. Whether this can happen next depends on the next 10 seconds. The bullet reached the ground faster than the sound of gunfire and the roar of the spacecraft engine. The splashing dust and violent bursts of sparks immediately caused the two battle machine clans to react. Like last time, they raised the large electromagnetic weapons on their right arms and locked onto the spacecraft passing above their heads. The extremely familiar dull hammering sound sounded. The durability of the armor panel of the spacecraft that Chen Ming had been staring at was instantly reduced by 1%. But this time, the words, armor penetrated, did not appear after the durability value. In the three-dimensional imaging of the spacecraft, Chen Ming could see that the two bullets failed to penetrate even half of the thickness of the armor. It's over. Chen Ming muttered to himself, stabilized the posture of the spacecraft, changed its direction, and hovered above the heads of the mechanical tribe. The two machine cannons have each fired nearly a thousand rounds of ammunition since they started firing. Even though the battle machines only had some scratches on their bodies after being exposed to the hail of bullets, the appearance of the psychic pulse generators behind them was already riddled with holes. The maintenance machine clan braved the rain of bullets to take out metal materials from the storage space inside the equipment for repair. But it is always easier to destroy than to repair. Chen Ming filled up all the bullets in the machine gun and fired another round of 2,000 bullets. Even if Chen Ming controlled the spacecraft at the extreme killing range of the machine gun, a large number of bullets failed to hit due to accuracy issues. But in the face of absolute numbers, there is no need to care about accuracy. Under the second round of strafing, the outer protective layer of the psychic pulse generator was completely destroyed. The internal circuits continuously erupted into sparks after bullets, and Chen Ming even saw an open flame igniting inside the equipment. There were two dull hammering sounds again. The third and fourth shots from the two combat machines hit the bottom armor of the spacecraft again. This time the two bullets also failed to penetrate. But Chen Ming's eyes suddenly condensed. Because in the three-dimensional imaging of the spacecraft, the impact points of the two bullets just now coincided with the bullet holes left by the previous round of bullets. Chen Ming immediately chose to repair the armor. The metal liquid quickly squeezed out the four warheads, filling the defects in the spacecraft's armor and restoring the armor to its original appearance. He didn't expect that the accuracy of the mechanical race's shooting would be so exaggerated. If you really give those two machines a chance to hit the same location with two bullets, your thickened armor may really be shot through. Right now, this psychic pulse device is just one breath away from being destroyed. It would be a joke if it overturned in the gutter. Chen Ming is now extremely grateful that he did not relax his vigilance just now because of the fire in the psychic pulse generator, and was still paying attention to the status of the spacecraft. Otherwise, unexpected situations may hit you head on at any time. Chen Ming withdrew his eyes from the panel. Since he was on guard, he could not give the machine clan another chance. As soon as there is damage to the spacecraft, Chen Ming will repair it immediately. It wouldn't take Chen Ming much mental energy to repair this kind of penetrating damage. Finally, under the continuous fire from two machine guns, the fire inside the psychic pulse generator was completely uncontrollable and suddenly exploded. The entire generator was torn apart and completely destroyed. At this point, Chen Ming's goal has been completed and he can just turn around and leave. Without the influence of psychic pulse, hunting will no longer be difficult. So Chen Ming immediately changed the flight trajectory of the spacecraft and stayed away from the two machines that were still aiming at the spacecraft to avoid further attacks. But when the spacecraft completely left their range, the spacecraft stopped again. 
Because Chen Ming didn't plan to leave just like that. The destroyed psychic pulse generator and the several moving machines were all attracting Chen Ming to do something. The only problem is that Chen Ming's only attack weapon now, the 22mm machine gun, is completely unable to penetrate the armor of the mechanical race and cause enough damage. And the modifications on the panel that can be made to the machine guns don't seem to be able to change this situation. To deal with them, it seems that the only way to deal with them is through a less mature method that Chen Ming had thought of before. Chen Ming opened the panel. There is a row like this on the ship type panel. Ton level. 2000 tons. This magnitude of 2000 tons is a numerical value used to roughly distinguish the tonnage of a spacecraft. The iron ore is a frigate, and frigates can be further divided into different levels such as 500 ton level, 1000 ton level, 2000 ton level, etc. Therefore, the specific quality of the iron ore number will be somewhat different from what is displayed on the panel. If the values in the spacecraft manual that Chen Ming read before are correct. So under the standard earth weight constant, the weight of the iron ore should be 2,209 tons. There will be some deviation between the weight constants of Jupiter and the earth, but not too much. The 2,200 tons were directly pressed down. Chen Ming did not believe that anyone could bear it. The spacecraft moved again and returned to the position where the mechanical clan was just now. The three machines did not choose to follow the departure route of the spacecraft but continued to guard the damaged psychic pulse generator, as if this was their mission. Seeing Chen Ming's spaceship returning, the two combat robots raised the large electromagnetic weapons on their right arms and tried to fight back as before. But the shooting interval of their weapons has become their most deadly problem now. It is impossible for a bullet to penetrate the thickened armor. It is also difficult for two different mechanical families to hit the same position at the same angle at the same time. Failure to hit two consecutive shots means that the damage in the previous shot will be repaired immediately by Chen Ming. As long as Chen Ming's spirit can bear it, it will be impossible for the machine race to shoot through this heavy armor in this lifetime. At this time, Chen Ming, with a trace of uncontrollable excitement, controlled the spacecraft to continuously accelerate, hitting the ground like falling from a high altitude. He didn't turn on the spacecraft's buffer device until he reached the most extreme altitude. The spacecraft continued to approach the ground with terrifying gravity acceleration. The mechanical tribe instantly realized something was wrong and immediately ran towards the nearest woods that could serve as cover. However, they had just run out a few dozen meters when they were completely covered by the shadow of Chen Ming's spacecraft. In the futile struggle of the mechanical tribe's continuous firing, terrifying pressure was exerted on them. The sound of metal twisting and deforming so hard that you couldn't help but cover your ears came from the bottom of the spacecraft. What followed was a loud noise as the spacecraft hit the ground. But Chen Ming is obviously not a fool. If the spaceship really lands firmly on the ground, he will not get any good results. So before Chen Ming did this, he used the computing power of the spacecraft computer to calculate some data about the spacecraft. Through this data, Chen Ming can choose a specific point in time to start the buffer device. Just before the spacecraft hits the ground, the buffer device is used to limit the falling speed to the impact range that the spacecraft armor can withstand. Therefore, the impact of the spacecraft landing did not cause any damage to the spacecraft itself. Except that there may be some small objects on the spacecraft that may fall to the ground after a few vibrations, other than that there won't be any major problems. Just as he was thinking about this, Chen Ming saw Xiao Shi running out of the storage compartment at the back and climbing onto his shoulder. Its little paws were pressed on its head, its eyes full of confusion and confusion. Chen Ming reached out and touched its head, comforted it, and continued to do business. At this time, Chen Ming saw obvious changes in the three-dimensional imaging of the spacecraft. Three pieces of the bottom armor of the spacecraft were dented which was obviously caused by the spacecraft hitting the mechanical race. I have to say that the machine race is really hard, and the shape of the armor's dents is almost the same as the shape of the machine race. However, no matter how hard the armor of the mechanical race is, the precision electronic components inside them cannot withstand the impact of thousands of tons of spacecraft. Ever since the spacecraft hit the ground just now, the dull hammering sound of the mechanical clan's electromagnetic weapons firing has completely stopped. 
Chen Ming didn't hear any strange noises from underneath the spacecraft at this time. It should be impossible for the machine race to stand up again. Chen Ming controlled the spacecraft to take off and repaired the armor of the spacecraft at the same time. After a feeling of gradually increasing fatigue, the metallic liquid flowing out of the storage compartment squeezed out the mechanical body stuck at the bottom of the spacecraft, and the three mechanical bodies fell to the ground like broken dolls. They appear to be quite intact on the outside, but it's hard to say how broken they are on the inside. The spacecraft landed again in the open space next to it. Chen Ming stepped off the spacecraft and began to clean up the battlefield. Relying on the force of force and the small cart that came from the space station, all the things that seemed valuable were moved to the spacecraft in one go after checking their safety. At this time, Chen Ming had to say that the mechanical race was pretty good. Before his own spacecraft pressed down, he took the initiative to distance himself from the wreckage of the psychic pulse device, and did not let the spacecraft crush any good things that might still be in the wreckage. The mechanical clan didn't leave much behind, so Chen Ming quickly packed it up and returned to the spacecraft. After reviewing it a few times to make sure nothing was missed, the spacecraft took off again and returned to the temporary camp. Only here did Chen Ming truly relax. The fatigue accumulated from repairing the spacecraft many times flooded into his brain. However, Chen Ming still held on with force, and even began to count the harvest this time with some excitement. There doesn't seem to be much to count about the things I got from the machine tribe. There are three mechanical bodies in total, two combat models, one repair model, plus the remains of the psychic pulse generator, there are only so many in total. But thinking about it from another direction, Although the quantity harvested this time is not large, the quality is quite high. Especially the two combat machines. Chen Ming's eyes kept scanning over the large electromagnetic weapon on their right arm, and his hand couldn't help but stroke the gun, feeling the cold touch. Even though the appearance of these two electromagnetic weapons, which were close to 1.7 meters in length, looked a bit old and were slightly bent due to the weight of the spacecraft, it did not prevent Chen Ming from admiring them at all. After all, this was a weapon that had directly penetrated the spacecraft armor with one shot before. Chen Ming worked with the electromagnetic weapon for a long time, and suddenly let out a long and satisfied breath. After satisfying your thoughts, it's clear what to do next. Chen Ming went to the captain's cabin and took the repair kit into the storage cabin. The company is quite generous when distributing these maintenance tools, which include cutting tools made of special grade metal materials. In other words, it is a material that is one level higher than the high-grade metal ore that can be collected by the Type 2 mining laser. Chen Ming was not sure what kind of material it was, but Chen Ming tried it directly and found that the cutting tool could indeed cut the armor of the mechanical clan. So Chen Ming immediately removed the two large electromagnetic weapons. Then he nervously opened the machine gun panel and chose to replace it. When he saw an option appear on the replacement panel, Chen Ming's nervousness immediately dissipated. Just as he had expected before, the weapons of the mechanical clan could indeed be loaded as ship weapons. The name of this electromagnetic weapon is also displayed on the replacement panel. Type 1 Mechanical Family Electromagnetic Javelin. A simple and unpretentious name, but also with the characteristics of a weapon, the javelin. Its penetrating ability is indeed worthy of its name. Chen Ming selected it on the panel and a new panel popped up. Type 1 Mechanical Family Electromagnetic Javelin. Type. Small Kinetic Energy Weapon. Manufacturer. Machinery Family RMW-113 Mothership. Ammo Load. 3 50ths. Effective Range. 20,000 meters. Fire Rate. 10 rounds per minute. Durability. 9%. Replace. Yes, no. Chen Ming looked at the content on the panel and blinked uncertainly. After confirming that he was not mistaken, he quickly wrote down all the words after the manufacturer on the terminal. If Chen Ming remembered the news he had read correctly, the mothership should be a type of aircraft carrier belonging to the mechanical family. But the aircraft carrier of the mechanical family is still too far away for Chen Ming now. So after recording the manufacturer, Chen Ming turned his attention to the properties of the weapon itself. The Type 1 Mechanical Family Electromagnetic Javelin is the same as the machine gun, both of which are small kinetic weapons. Chen Ming was not surprised by this. Although the gun itself is a bit too big compared to the size of a human, 
it is still relatively small for a ship, so there is no problem with small weapons. It is more outrageous to say that a weapon used by a single mechanical family can be used as a ship weapon. Although the firing rate displayed on the panel is a bit pitiful compared to the firing rate of the machine gun, its power can be regarded as making up for the lost firing rate. Chen Ming pressed. Yes, on the panel. The charged javelin that had just been removed from the floor suddenly melted, and the gray-green shell melted and turned bright white, flowing out of the spacecraft. It looks like the gray-green is an oxide layer, and the mechanical family itself should be this bright white. As the bright white liquid flows out, some ordinary metal liquid also flows in from the outside of the spacecraft. These metal liquids gradually condensed into the shape of a modified machine gun in front of Chen Ming, lying quietly on the ground. On the panel of the spacecraft, the portside weapon has been replaced with an electromagnetic javelin. Looking at the pitiful 9% durability on the panel, Chen Ming's eyes turned to the mechanical family armor that was the same color as the electromagnetic javelin just now. Then he picked up the tool and cut a few pieces of armor from the mechanical family as materials. After confirming that the name of this material is Baiyun steel, a kind of high-grade metal, Chen Ming pressed the repair button of the weapon. Bright white liquid mixed with other materials needed to repair the electromagnetic javelin flowed out of the spacecraft. Soon, a brand new Type 1 mechanical electromagnetic javelin appeared in his eyes. This weapon full of past fantasies made Chen Ming a little unable to suppress his excitement. It was a pity that there was no target for him to test it now. Chen Ming was like a child who had just got a toy gun, and this idea suddenly popped up in his mind. Wait, it seems so. Chen Ming raised his head and looked at the ceiling of the spacecraft. Looking up through the ceiling, there was a space station full of Zerg in space. While the spaceship is flying into space, Chen Ming picked up the cutting tool, removed the electromagnetic javelin from another combat machine, and replaced it with the weapon on the starboard side of the spacecraft. Although the durability of this electromagnetic javelin is also very low, Chen Ming has not repaired it for the time being, otherwise he always feels that he may faint at any time. So after placing the two replaced 22mm cannons on the shelves in the storage compartment, Chen Ming turned around and continued cutting up the remaining things on the mechanical clan. In addition to the two Type 1 mechanical clan electromagnetic javelins, these three mechanical clans also have a large amount of armor that can be disassembled. These armors are all made of solid dolomite steel. Just throw the removed armor into the spacecraft furnace, and the rest of the computer will help Chen Ming take care of it. After working for a while, Chen Ming removed a total of 627 kilograms of armor from the three robots. After these armors are smelted, the amount of white cloud steel ingots produced will be less than this amount. But it will be enough for Chen Ming to maintain the electromagnetic javelin in the future. This Bei Yun steel is the second high-grade metal material that Chen Ming obtained after Sky Steel. It will definitely provide a lot of convenience for Chen Ming's development in the human world in the future. But Chen Ming thought that after smelting the Sky Steel that he had worked so hard to collect, he only produced 5 ingots, not even 50 kilograms in total. Compare this to the fact that now that I have eliminated 3 mechanical clans, I have obtained a full 600 kilograms of white cloud steel. The difference is not even a little bit. Thinking of this, Chen Ming always felt that there was something wrong with his mentality. Even if Bei Yun Steel has the lowest price among all high-end metal materials in his own impression, Chen Ming now knows the reason for the low price. But this does not prevent Chen Ming from now being filled with the idea of looking for the mechanical race elsewhere on the planet. As long as one is killed, another 200 kilograms of white cloud steel will be earned. Isn't it faster than working hard and spending a long time collecting minerals in the high-density asteroid belt? However, Chen Ming finally restrained his thoughts. Don't forget that what you have to do is to get enough food and get out of here. Chen Ming obtained high-grade metal minerals just to get the first pot of gold when he went to the pirate space station. Having the first pot of gold would facilitate subsequent development. So far, Chen Ming's sky steel and Baiyun steel are enough. Any more and you may attract some bad people or things. What's more, even if you have the idea of finding trouble with the machine tribe, where should you go to find it? Can you find it? Could the time spent halfway be used on other things to gain more? These questions are all unknown. 
so the idea of finding a mechanical tribe was just an idea. The outer armor of the three mechanical clans was removed. Chen Ming randomly selected a combat machine and continued inside to dismantle its structural layers. The main material of the mechanical family's structural layer is dolomite steel mixed with ordinary steel materials. Chen Ming will throw these things into the furnace together with the mechanical family's armor. And inside the structural layer is the core structure of the mechanical family. According to Chen Ming's observation, the mechanical clan has two cores. One is a chip located on their head that is connected to a large number of wires. The other is a spherical mechanical creation located in the middle of the mechanical race's torso, corresponding to the position of the human heart. There may be data or something similar to an AI personality inside the chip. Chen Ming plans to keep it for now to see if there is a chance to figure out its value later. However, Chen Ming, another spherical mechanical creation, was completely confused about its effect. Maybe it's the control center of the machine race. Or a generator. Energy supply. Chen Ming couldn't figure it out, and finally decided to just dismantle it, and then use a terminal to record the entire process of disassembly, which might be useful in the future. In short, at the end, the entire machine family, except for the chip, was dismantled into the most basic materials by Chen Ming. Stacked in the corner of the storage room, Chen Ming, the other two mechanical clans, also followed suit, and soon the bodies of the three complete mechanical clans disappeared into the storage compartment. All that is left are those materials that have been sorted and stacked according to material type. Chen Ming had to say that there were quite a lot of precious metals such as gold and silver in the core structure of the machine race. It makes up for a large part of Chen Ming's previous consumption of overloaded power grid modification. As the three mechanical clans were completely dismantled. Next came the highlight, the remains of the psychic pulse generator. This equipment exploded before, and Chen Ming picked up four large pieces of debris from the spacecraft, as well as some other bits and pieces. Chen Ming checked those bits and pieces directly on the panel. They were all garbage and would be discharged directly from the spacecraft together with the slag. But there might be something good in these big pieces of debris. Chen Ming picked up the cutting tool and prepared to work on these pieces of debris. But at this moment, Xiaoxi, who had been quiet all this time, suddenly jumped off Chen Ming's shoulder. Curious, he moved closer to the wreckage and kept sniffing something. Before Chen Ming could react, Xiaoxi stretched out his claws and tore open the burnt shell and got in. Chen Ming did not stop it, but started cutting from a different angle. I plan to cut off the shell completely and see what the little rocks are doing when they get in. Chen Ming had just cut a little, and the small stone suddenly came out again. In its arms it holds a round stone covered with twisted patterns. But after Xiaoxi came out, he threw the stone on the floor and climbed up on Chen Ming's shoulder again. He looked like he was sulking. Um. Chen Ming looked at the small stone on his shoulder and didn't understand what was wrong with it. Xiaoxi couldn't speak and Chen Ming didn't know how to comfort him because of his sulking look. After thinking about it, Chen Ming reached out and planned to pick up the stone on the ground. However, as soon as Chen Ming's hand touched the stone, he immediately took it back as if he was electrocuted. At the same time, his expression became obviously worse. Because the moment Chen Ming touched the stone, an extremely annoying sound with no source suddenly sounded in Chen Ming's ears. It's like, being affected by a psychic pulse. Chen Ming frowned and opened the spacecraft panel, and the name of the stone was displayed on the storage compartment. Ectoplasm stone, whispers. This stone is what Chen Ming is looking for related to psychic abilities. And it is probably the source of psychic pulses. Chen Ming immediately ran to the captain's cabin and put on protective clothing. Returned to the storage cabin again and tried to pick up the stone. Although the irritating whispers were also ringing in Chen Ming's ears this time, the sounds this time were not as unbearable as Chen Ming's direct contact with the ectoplasmic stone just now. However, Chen Ming also noticed that as the time he spent touching the spiritual stone increased, the whispers in his ears gradually became louder. Chen Ming immediately picked up a box from the shelf next to him and threw the whispering stone into it. The contact was broken and the whispers in his ears faded. Chen Ming couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Although the whisper died as the contact ceased. But at this time, 
Chen Ming looked at the twisted patterns on the stone and felt that there was still an indescribable weird atmosphere next to it. As this psionics, Chen Ming muttered to himself with some emotion. Just a stone can give people extremely heavy pressure when it comes into contact. If this kind of thing is exposed to for a long time, I am afraid that the final outcome will be the same as the previous animals that fell into madness due to psychic pulses. No wonder Shaoxi was quite interested in rocks just now but as soon as he got started, he immediately threw them away. Although this stone cannot be seen to have any specific use, it is at least related to psychic abilities. Even if it is sold directly, it will definitely get a good price. Although the difficulty of selling may be a bit high, and it may also attract the prying eyes of some people like selling high-grade metals in large quantities. But Chen Ming can also choose to keep it for himself. In the future, he may be able to find some ways to use it that an ordinary person can't even imagine now. Chen Ming found a piece of iron sheet, welded the box containing the ectoplasm stone, and threw it in the corner of the engine room at the rear of the spacecraft. Although it seems that the most it can affect is those things it comes into contact with. But just in case, Chen Ming still thinks it's best to stay away from this stone. It just so happens that the engine compartment itself does not pass by at all except for regular refueling, so it can be used as a place to store such dangerous items. After placing the ectoplasmic stone, Chen Ming suddenly realized a problem. Since mind refers to will, thinking, and spirit, mind abilities are abilities that affect these aspects. Just like the stone just now, its spiritual ability is to produce whispers, which can interfere with people's thinking and spirit. Then. Every time I use my ability to repair and modify the spacecraft through the panel, I have to spend a lot of energy. Thinking of this, is it possible that the panel of the spaceship is my own psychic ability? Or is it just externally similar to psychic abilities? If the latter is fine, but if it's the former, then you have to pay more attention to the use of your abilities. Because the military seems to have unknown means in rumors to investigate those who have psychic abilities, or even just the potential for psychic abilities. If you are discovered, it is very likely that someone will follow the clues and find your past, and the consequences will be disastrous. It's best not to take action against this spiritual stone, at least until you are far away from this edge star field. After warning himself in his heart, Chen Ming returned to the storage cabin and continued to examine other remains of the psychic pulse generator. However, after taking out the ectoplasm stone, there was nothing valuable in the remaining equipment remains. Basically, it's just some metal materials, which will be thrown into the furnace together with the mechanical armor. But overall it's pretty much the same. Two ship weapons, a large amount of high-grade metal materials and some precious metals, three chips that may store valuable data, and the whispering ectoplasm stone. Just looking at Chen Ming's harvest, he couldn't help but raise the corners of his mouth. Not to mention that his initial goal was just to get rid of the psychic pulse generator. Chen Ming finally spent some time, went to the work cabin, started the furnace, and threw in all the materials that had been removed from the machine race. After finishing this matter, the spacecraft has almost arrived at the mining space station. The entire space station can be seen completely outside the portal of the captain's cabin. Xiaoxi was standing on Chen Ming's shoulders, looking curiously at this strange thing to him with a pair of smart little eyes. It was exactly the same as when Chen Ming took it into space for the first time a few days ago and it saw the starry sky. Chen Ming raised the corners of his mouth slightly and touched Xiao Xi's head. Then he controlled the spacecraft and flew towards the space station dock. Just like the last time Chen Ming came to the space station, as soon as the spacecraft approached, a large group of scary-looking bugs emerged from unknown corners of the space station and gathered in the dock. Chen Ming didn't feel anything after seeing it too much, but Xiao Xi was startled by the sudden appearance of these insects. Without paying attention, he rolled to the ground along Chen Ming's shoulder. When the small stone climbed up again, I realized that these insects were no threat to me at all, and then it turned into the bulging look it had just now. Maybe it was animal instinct that made Xiao Xi subconsciously avoid such ferocious creatures, or maybe Xiao Xi was frightened by these dense insects. No matter what the reason was, the smile on Chen Ming's face became more obvious. Xiao Xi can bring him a lot of fun many times. However, Chen Ming did not forget about the business. 
he quickly adjusted his state and concentrated his attention, which was somewhat distracted due to fatigue. He connected his consciousness to the weapon system of the spacecraft and aimed at the bugs crowding the edge of the dock. At this time, Chen Ming suddenly discovered that the bugs in front of him seemed to be fatter than the last time he came. No, it doesn't seem like I'm fat. Chen Ming immediately dug out the video taken by the spacecraft the last time he came to the space station. After comparing them, I quickly discovered where the problem was. Just like Chen Ming's judgment just now, these bugs did not get fat, but their carapace became thicker. Although the overall appearance does not change much, you can still see the difference if you look closely. And just as Chen Ming was flipping through the video, there were some types of bugs that he had never seen approaching one after another in the distance of the space station. Chen Ming has only seen two different kinds of bugs so far. The other type is a larva that has just hatched from an insect egg. It looks like an alien cub and can only cause damage by biting with its mouthparts. Its actual combat effectiveness is very low. Chen Ming was chased by a swarm of larvae once when he was looking for food in the cold storage. The other is the adult worm after the larvae grow into it. This is what Chen Ming Gang saw after he woke up from the cryo chamber of the space station. It was the bug that killed the doctor. Later, Chen Ming saw it again in the cold storage of the spacecraft. Through the panel of the cabin, he learned that its name was Thornzerg Strider. The appearance is very similar to the Zerg that often appears in various science fiction movies, with six sharp hind limbs and a pair of huge and sharp sickle-like front claws. It has a very solid carapace with many spikes on its body, and a terrifying-looking mouthparts. And now Chen Ming saw this new Zerg. Although the overall appearance is similar to that of a platypod, there are bulging translucent vesicles on each side of its head, which seem to store some liquid inside. The neck of this insect is also different from ordinary broadsteppers. Not only is it not protected by the carapace, it even exposes some disgusting internal tissues. Chen Ming could also see its tight and well-developed muscles between these tissues. These bugs gave Chen Ming the feeling. It was as if they had suddenly evolved during his absence. Not only has it evolved a thicker carapace that can be used to block bullets, but it has also evolved the ability to attack from a distance. Seeing the changes in the bugs occupying the space station, Chen Ming's face inadvertently darkened. How long has it been? These bugs have evolved corresponding defense and coping methods based on their previous encounters. If they are given some more time and some external pressure, what will these bugs eventually become? It's really scary, Chen Ming said, and the gloom on his face suddenly disappeared. Anyway, I'm leaving soon. If everything goes well in the future, I will probably not encounter these bugs with extraordinary evolutionary abilities. No matter how fast they evolve, as long as they haven't evolved the ability to fly in space for a long time, they can't threaten me. While only a few cysts are standing on the edge of the dock, they open their mouthparts to the spacecraft. Chen Ming directly controlled the spacecraft to avoid the scattered liquid sprayed, and took the opportunity to increase the distance between it and the space station. Besides, I didn't come here to see the changes of the bugs and how powerful they are. But to test the weapons. I could easily clear a large area of bugs with the unmodified machine guns before. If I come here again with the same bugs, it will be difficult to judge the effect of the new weapons compared to the old ones. These evolved bugs are simply the best targets for weapon experiments. Just thinking about this, Chen Ming felt that the abandonment of the space station exuded a conspiracy from beginning to end. A space station belonging to a company that was based in a dangerous marginal star field was abandoned overnight by a group of bugs that could kill a large area with civilian ship weapons. However, Chen Ming's goal was never to find out what happened to the space station, so this idea was thrown out after just a circle in his mind. Chen Ming continued to control the spacecraft, keeping the spacecraft and the dock of the space station on the same plane. At the same time, he continued to keep the spacecraft away from the space station until it reached the range limit written on the electromagnetic javelin panel. At this position, through the high-precision camera of the spacecraft, Chen Ming could see every move of the bugs on the space station. The electromagnetic javelin panel says that it has a range of 20,000 meters. Let me confirm it myself. After aiming at the swarm of insects that were about to disperse in space because the spaceship was invisible to the naked eye. Chen Ming couldn't wait to fire. 
The electromagnetic javelin on the port side shook slightly, and a bullet accelerated by electromagnetics flew straight to the space station without any resistance in space. At the same time, the dull hammering sound of the electromagnetic javelin firing came to Chen Ming's ears along the hull, making Chen Ming's heart almost skip a beat. I didn't feel it when I was shot by the mechanical family before, but when I controlled the electromagnetic javelin to shoot, I always felt that the hammering sound had an indescribable sense of power. And the actual effect of this shooting did not disappoint Chen Ming at all, and it could even be said to be far beyond expectations. As soon as the sound of firing reached Chen Ming's ears, Chen Ming saw that the electromagnetic bullet had hit the locked position. Just one shot, from the edge of the dock to the depths of the dock, at least dozens of broad step insects were penetrated by this shot. As long as they were hit by a fatal part, these bugs didn't even move, and they lost their breath and fell into the cold space. Their evolved shells were like paper in front of the electromagnetic javelin, and they couldn't provide any protection. The bugs that were gradually dispersing were like being pricked by needles, and they became agitated in an instant, constantly waving in the direction of any possible enemies around them. Obviously, there was no point in them doing this. Six seconds later, the second electromagnetic bullet was fired, and once again penetrated the bugs that were almost crowded in the dock. This time, there happened to be a few cyst bugs among the dead bugs, and the cyst of one cyst bug was just pierced by the electromagnetic bullet. A large amount of liquid overflowed from the cyst and flowed to the ground. The metal floor was instantly covered with small holes. Although the vacuum would not transmit sound, the sound of acid corroding metal was still automatically filled in. With the death of the second batch of dozens of bugs, the remaining bugs finally realized that the enemy was far away. They all hid in the buildings of the surrounding space station. Although the electromagnetic javelin can directly shoot through the wall of the space station, the limited field of vision makes it difficult for Chen Ming to aim. Since he has just seen the effect of the new weapon, there is actually no need to continue. Chen Ming refilled the electromagnetic javelin with bullets, drove the spaceship back to the edge of the space station dock, and attracted the bugs hiding in the building again. Before the attack range of those cyst bugs could reach him, Chen Ming drove the spaceship and disappeared in front of the swarm of bugs again. The spaceship did not fly directly to Reimu. Instead, just like the last time, after leaving the bugs' field of vision, it made a big circle and came to the living area of the space station. Chen Ming originally wanted to go to the power generation area to replenish some fuel, so he specially chose the dock to attract bugs for weapon experiments and attract bugs over. But now that he has arrived at the living area, Chen Ming found that it seemed to be because he attracted many Zerg last time. The interior of the living area is already the same as that near the mining area, filled with all kinds of disgusting growths, and there are also many unhatched eggs mixed in. There was absolutely no way to get off the ground, let alone get fuel. Fortunately, the fuel Chen Ming prepared before leaving the space station for the first time was enough to last him for a long, long time. I just came with the idea that if I don't take it, I'll see if I can get more. But since I now know that the living area and the power generation area below are both dangerous, I can just leave. Chen Ming turned the ship's bow without hesitation and pointed it in the direction of Ruimu. After a while, Chen Ming once again stood on the solid ground of the temporary camp. I picked up the tools and nutrient solution and started the task of caring for the crops that I should do every day. After finishing, it was just approaching dusk in the temporary camp. However, Chen Ming felt that his head was already a ball of mush at this time. The fatigue accumulated from the continuous maintenance of the spacecraft all day came to his mind after he relaxed. After a brief tidying up, Chen Ming lay on the bed in the living cabin and rested peacefully for the first time. Because until now, all the obstacles in front of my goal have been cleared, and all the difficulties have been solved. Starting tomorrow, no more psychic pulses, no more crazy animals, everything will go back to normal. Everything will proceed step by step. Seven days passed in a blink of an eye. Today is the 28th day since the spacecraft landed. Autumn in Ruimu is coming to an end. Chen Ming hurriedly harvested the second batch of orange fruits planted outside the spacecraft before the temperature dropped completely. Completely fill the last squeezed space in the refrigerator compartment. All the food in the entire freezer is enough to last for more than 10 months. In addition, 
there are also those orange fruits still growing in the hydroponic warehouse of the planting cabin. Even if the spaceship's cultivation cabin explodes on the spot, Chen Ming can safely reach the pirate space station all the way. The food reserves are enough, so it's time to leave here. Chen Ming smoothly closed the door of the storage cabin. Outside the spaceship, in the field where crops had just been harvested, I found Xiaoxi who was looking for something to eat. Chen Ming did not take Xiaoxi away directly, but squatted in front of it and said, Xiaoxi, I'm getting ready to leave. Do you want to follow me? Xiaoxi tilted his head, wondering if he understood what Chen Ming said. But it must have seen the buds that Chen Ming had just picked out from the hydroponic barn, and it immediately climbed onto Chen Ming's shoulders. Chen Ming touched Xiao Shi's head and turned to look at the camp he had built with his own hands. Except for the surrounding fence, the entire temporary camp seemed a bit empty. There is nothing worth remembering here. Seeing Xiao Shi on his shoulder happily nibbling on the buds, Chen Ming smiled and stepped onto the spaceship. A few minutes later, the spacecraft's engine started, and the iron ore turned the ship's bow and flew into space. The spacecraft did not fly directly in the direction of the planned pirate space station, but stayed at a certain distance from the space station as before. Before the official departure, Chen Ming planned to make another trip to the asteroid belt and fill the remaining space in the storage cabin with ore. After all, places like the star rings of Rui Jupiter, which have such a high density of asteroids rich in metal minerals, may not be encountered for a long time in the future. Chen Ming started the asteroid detection scanner and found a high-density area in the asteroid belt. High-intensity mining continued until four days later. The remaining shelves in the storage compartment have been filled with various metal materials. In order to ensure that the proportion of different materials stored in your store is balanced, to avoid the lack of specific materials in the future. Chen Ming also deliberately threw a lot of ordinary iron outside to free up a lot of space. The metal of an entire storage cabin should be enough to sustain the voyage for half a year, as long as Chen Ming does not need to repair the spacecraft frequently. With everything ready, Chen Ming set up the navigation route on the navigation system, and the rest was left to the spacecraft itself. Watching the spacecraft gradually begin to accelerate, Chen Ming sat down on the chair in the captain's cabin and relaxed. Space navigation is just like sailing on the sea, there are not so many things to operate. At most, when an unexpected incident occurs, Chen Ming needs to handle it personally. All that's left is waiting, a long wait. Wait half a year for the spacecraft to travel this half a light year. Chen Ming has long been accustomed to the boring life day after day, a life where there is no intersection and just survival. It would be better to say that now that Xiaoxi is with him, his life is better than before. The books in the terminal are enough for me to read for half a year. If you get tired of reading, you can try to practice everything you learned from the book. The last minds I mined before leaving were just to do these things during the half-light year journey. As long as it wasn't the kind of modification that would kill someone if he made a mistake, Chen Ming could do it himself without relying on the panel. Chen Ming opened the panel. All cabins, all equipment, and all object panels are listed. Looking at the panels in front of him that almost covered his entire field of vision, Chen Ming knew that he still had a lot to do. But so many transformations must come step by step. At present, the top priority for renovation should be the living cabin in Chen Ming's vision. Because many modifications require some accessories, if the modification is done with panels, Chen Ming only needs to prepare the materials. But if it were done manually, Chen Ming would have to find a way to make these accessories himself. Therefore, Chen Ming plans to transform a studio into his living cabin. Having a studio can facilitate many things. Moreover, the living cabin of the iron mine itself should be used by the four to six people equipped as standard on the iron mine. Chen Ming does not need to take up too much space in the living cabin to rest alone. There's no problem converting extra space into a studio. The transformation of the studio and the subsequent modification of the spacecraft will also be a long process. Chen Ming has plenty of patience and time. Three days later, the prototype of the studio appeared in the living cabin. Chen Ming used the precision tools in the repair kit and through constant trials, verifications, dismantling and rebuilding, he made a small machine tool. In this way, many of the molds and other equipment you need can be manufactured using machine tools. 
Moreover, after this machine tool was manufactured, it appeared on Chen Ming's panel like the equipment in other cabins of the spacecraft. Chen Ming can even control the machine tool to work by itself without having to do it himself. However, Chen Ming will not do this for the time being, because in the process of manufacturing this machine tool, Chen Ming can feel that the memories of professional skills in his mind are gradually becoming his own abilities. If you make things through panels, your abilities will never increase. Chen Ming needs to practice to make memory truly become a part of himself. Moreover, when Chen Ming reads a book after work these days, he can clearly feel that he is learning and mastering knowledge much faster than before. After all, you can only know how to do many things by actually doing them. So on the last day of the first week after departure, Chen Ming transformed half of the living cabin into the studio he envisioned. Machine tools, item racks, tool racks, work tables, and tools from the repair kit that can meet almost all repair and modification tasks are already in the studio. The next step is to modify the spacecraft itself. The transformation of the entire spacecraft is not as simple as the transformation of a living cabin. Every step requires careful consideration to avoid damage to the spacecraft and accidents. Therefore, it is the second weekend after departure. Chen Mingkai has just planned the overall transformation plan of the spacecraft and made some accessories that may be needed in the future. It wasn't until the 15th day after departure that Chen Ming was completely ready for his first transformation. The first object that Chen Ming wanted to modify was the spacecraft's temperature control system. Thanks for watching.